Lieutenant Steve Louch, I've been with the Sea Cadets for the last 38 years, um, involved with bands uh, from that, uh, all, all through that period. Uh, started off at Tumbridge Wells and played in the band there and attended um, many different events and competitions over the years. Um, I've been uh, the ASO band Southern uh, previously for 10 years and I'm, I've been for the last 11 years the executive officer for the mass bands of the Secrets. Uh, supporting the director of music in most of the major events that we do um, across the country. Thank you for joining us, Steve. Um, Adam. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name's Lieutenant Adam Smith. Um, down from the, the other end of the country, um, down in East Kent. Uh, currently the ASO band for Southern Area um, and one of the band instructors for the national band team as well. Okay, so um, I'll just share my screen to begin with <clears throat> to make sure that uh, everybody can see before I move on. How's that, Catherine? Is that looking? Um... Yeah, that's amazing. Yep. yep. Let me just get rid of one of these boxes. Okay, guys, so uh, I'll stop my video because that might get rid of my little box in the corner hopefully um so yeah i'm sergeant bugler kim her i'm with the royal marines band uh scotland at the moment uh and i've come to talk to you this evening about careers in the royal marines band service um i'm going to start off though with a few slides just explaining um who i am and kind of my connections to the sea cadet corps so a few little photographs there that you can see uh throughout my career i started as a junior sea cadet um, made my way up into senior sea cadets and then after quite a long time um, joined the Royal Marines Band Service. So we'll uh, we'll move, move on. Okay, so I joined the sea cadets in 1991, which for those of you that are good at maths might give my age away slightly, um, where I was taught to play the drum and bugle um, and bell lyre. I started on the bell lyre initially and then moved on to the drum because it's pretty cool. Um, uh, the black and white photograph that you see there is of me at the Royal Marine School of Music in Deal, aged 12. There were um, coloured photographs back then. I'm old, but not quite that old. It was only black and white. I'm not sure why that is, but there we go. Um, and that was on a Sea Cadet training course. So we took the whole band down to the Royal Marine School of Music and we had some instruction from some of their um, some of their main instructors at the school there, which was really helpful to the band. And it obviously gave... Uh, myself and a couple of others a bit of a taste of life in the Royal Marines band um, and sort of something to think about with regards our future uh, and then so that was mainly playing in playing in the unit band but then in 1996 I started taking part in some of the national sort of sea cadet mass band events that we had all over the UK and the other photographs um, that you see there are of some of those performing at the Royal Tournament, which, which was a big military kind of pageant that we had um, back in the 90s. And we had a big sea cadet band of well in excess of 100 cadets and adult volunteers as well, um, which was an amazing thing to be part of. One of the years we were there performing at the same time as the mass bands at the Royal Marines, which was a great inspiration as well. So something else that made me uh, look to sort of joining up in the future. Um, a few more sea cadet photos there. So the, the one in the middle there is a, a random Royal Marine bandsman that I um, collared to say, excuse me, sir, please can I have a photograph with you um, when we were performing at the Royal Tournament um, back in 1996 or seven. Um, and that actually turned out to be a chap called Nick Grace, who was the Lieutenant Colonel Principal Director of Music when I eventually joined the Royal Marines Band Service. Um, so that's a little random coincidence there. But in 1997, I applied to join the Royal Marines Band Service. Um, unfortunately, had an issue with the medical and uh, I couldn't actually join up at that time. Um, so I was kind of coming to the end of my time as a, as a sea cadet. I was sort of 17 at this point. Um, and so because I didn't join up, I became an adult instructor instead within the Sea Cadets. So uh, a few more pictures here. And I started instruction as part of the Sea Cadet National Band Training Team. So um, teaching the Corps of Drugs, 
drums and the bugles when we did events like the National Trafalgar Day Parade, which some of you may be taking part in, um, the National Sea Cadet Band Courses down at HMS Raleigh. And you can see the top left picture there is me as a, a Sea Cadet Chief um, instructing on one of those courses. Um, but then the other two photos, exactly the same sort of courses. The big ones, another course at HMS Rally. Um, the small one on the bottom there is one of the workshops that we run at uh, Western Superman Sea Cadet Unit. Um, and I'm doing exactly the same job, but just as a Royal Marines bugler instead. So my ties for the Sea Cadets have continued, um, kind of even though I left the Corps um, and joined a new Corps. Um, so then in 2010, uh, I finally got around to reapplying for the band service and I joined up as a Royal Marines bugler. So I'll briefly go over these bits, but they're contained in a sort of in a presentation that I'm going to do next, which is more generic about a career in the band service. But as a Royal Marines bugler, we play the military side drum, which you can see in the main picture there. Uh, the E flat held trumpet on occasion uh, and the bugle, the drum and bugle are our main instruments and you can see that in the picture there where I'm performing a last post um, with the Exeter rugby team at Exeter Chiefs ground which was pretty cool as a big rugby fan. Um, we front the parade band so if you've ever seen us marching around your town or marching around London um, you see the Royal Marines Corps of Drums always at the front of our band, which is unique to us. Any other military bands tend to have trombones at the front. Uh, we take part in concerts as well. So whether it's a big mass band concert at the Royal Albert Hall, like the Matt Batten Festival of Music, or whether it's just a local concert with one band on it, there will often be a core of drums ranging from five people up to maybe 25 taking part in those concerts and doing a little march sequence. Uh, we do mess beatings, which uh, are basically drum displays. So for military um, dinners, for example, if there was a military mess dinner, um, we might open proceedings with a, a ceremonial drum display, which lasts for about five minutes. Um, and that kind of shows off our skills as just a core of drums on our own. Um, on the bugle, we do lots of memorials sunset ceremonies which can be on board ship um playing on remembrance sunday um and doing last posts at various locations around the uk including um in london at the cenotaph on uh, remembrance sunday um and i am now i've been promoted through the ranks so started as a bugler went up through lance corporal corporal and i'm now currently the sergeant um, bugler in charge of the corps of drums in the royal marines band scotland um, last year, in 2022, I attended the Royal Marines Drum Majors course, and I'm the first ever female to qualify as a Royal Marines Drum Major. Um, I don't yet have an appointment. That will hopefully come in the future. Um, but I'm currently the Assistant Drum Major of the Royal Marines Band Scotland. And there's a couple of photos there of me out on my first engagement, I think, as as a drum major when our our appointed drum major wasn't available so I have had the opportunity to lead a Royal Marines band out on parade which was really exciting. Uh, I've done extensive travel in my time in the uh, in the Royal Marines band service as you can see from the list there um, I've been to the opposite end of the world with the Falkland Islands and Australia. I've been all the way over to Chile um, and the USA, and I've been to countless places in Europe as well, um, not to mention all four corners of the UK, most recently Scarborough uh, for the weekend. Uh, we enjoy lots of high profile engagements as part of the Corps of Drums, so often performing for the royal family, um, most recently at the coronation of His Majesty the King, um, playing for heads of state, which you can see here in the in the photograph on the screen. Uh, it was the 70th anniversary um, of the foundation of NATO, uh, and we had all the heads of state in London for this big conference, including our prime minister, the US president, uh, and all the other heads of state from all around the world. And while they were having their press photographs taken, they wanted uh, an ensemble to basically entertain them whilst they were having their photographs taken um, for about a minute, a minute and 30 seconds. So they chose the Royal Marines Corps of Drums. 
um, which was which was pretty exciting. Although, as you can probably see from the photograph um, and our helmets, we could only really see their feet at the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't actually get to see who was there until we saw the photographs afterwards. Um, I've played at Twickenham Stadium for the Army Navy Rugby, which is exciting, hearing uh, 80,000 people sing along to a national anthem them that you're playing um playing at the royal british legion festival of remembrance at the royal albert hall on quite a number of occasions i i found that to be one of the one of the best engagements that i did since i joined up because as a sea cadet um every remembrance sunday i was on parade somewhere usually in harrogate um and the Saturday night before i would always be sat polishing my boots ironing my uniform getting ready for that parade and I'd be watching the festival of remembrance on the telly on that Saturday night um so the first time I attended that was was felt like a real privilege um to kind of be part of that having watched it for so many years um and we also get to do quite high profile solo engagements as well as buglers so we play last post um and I've had the privilege of doing that at Westminster Abbey um on my own and playing at the cenotaph for not on remembrance Sunday because that's always a big core of drums with about 10 buglers playing um but i played for a different memorial at the cenotaph in london which was which was quite cool to do um that's a little photograph there of some of us some of our harrogate sea cadets um so the the core of drums the buglers um branch within the royal marines band service is predominantly made up of um people that come from a cadet or general youth marching band background um, lots of which I would say over 50% uh, are ex-sea cadets. Um, and this is just a small fraction, but it's me and a few of my friends that joined up from Harrogate Sea Cadets. Unfortunately, uh, in the aged picture on the left, um, young Haley isn't in there because she wasn't actually a cadet at the time because she's a little bit younger than the other three of us. But um, we're we're all still serving now all still in uniform um and yeah career's going well so i'll leave this this slide up for um a little bit if anybody wants to take a screenshot of it or get your phones out and take a picture this is just a little bit more information or where you can find sorry more information out about sea cadet music so I think um, Steve and Adam will probably talk to you a little bit afterwards and answer any questions that you've got. But obviously, Sea Cadets are on Facebook. Um, there's a national band page under the heading uh, Sea Cadet Bands. Your areas will also have um, Facebook pages as well. So maybe take a look uh, and see if you can get yourself attached to one of those, particularly if you're in a unit um, that doesn't have a band. But if you play an instrument within your school um, or you're learning an instrument outside of school, you can still take part in national sea cadet events, in national mass bands, and um, you can get yourself on the national courses as well. Um, so get yourself on there, have a little look, um, and all of your sea cadet sort of staff are part of those Facebook groups as well. So they can um, give you any more information that you need on who to talk to or who to apply to. Um, as it says down the bottom there, your ASO bands for each area. Um, if you don't know who that is, one of the adult um, staff within your unit will probably know, so they'll be able to put you in touch. Um, the YouTube page. So that takes you to... Um, let me see if I can share a different screen with you. So the Sea Cadet Portal, you probably all know about anyway. Steve can probably tell you a little bit more about that um, than I can. Um, but the YouTube page and the link tree, if I can just share with you another screen. So that YouTube page takes you to here, Sea Cadet Bands. So on there, you can find loads of videos of Sea Cadet Bands, mass bands displays, um, individual unit bands performing at places. So that's good to get an idea of what you're playing, what drill to do, um, what the Sea Cadets are capable of if you're not involved with uh, a Sea Cadet Band already. Um, and the link tree link takes you to this page, which of obviously directs you to all of those things as well. So the Linktree one is probably the best one for you to get on board with. 
me go back to my to my slide. Um, so that's that one. And then this is just a again, if you want to take a photo of this or a screenshot and save it for later, this is just our the Royal Marines Band Services um social media handles. We're we're all over social media. And if you want any more information, once I've um gone through the the next presentation um i'll pop this up at the end again as well but there's an email address there at the bottom that you can get literally any further information that you want about the band service about um what we do or what you can apply for etc so um we'll come back to that one at the end of my at the end of my next slide so if you've got any questions so far pop them in the chat um and we'll we'll look at coming to those in a in a few moments time but i'll just move on to we've got a i've got a presentation for you now which is a bit more generic about careers in the band service um kind of what to expect um how the audition process is carried out um and what benefits you can expect whilst uh, serving as a royal marines musician or bugler so hopefully I've got a little video for you next. Okay, so who are the Royal Marines? Let's firstly just look at who the Royal Marines are to begin with. Um, so the Royal Marines are made up, the Corps is made up of three separate parts, the Royal Marines Commandos, uh, the Royal Marines Reserve and the Royal Marines Band Service. Uh, the commandos make up the bulk of our Corps family with 40 Commando based out of Taunton in Somerset, 4-2 Commando who work out of Plymouth, and 4-5 Commando, uh, who join us in Scotland in our broth. Uh, the Royal Marines Reserve is a volunteer reserve force based all around the country. Um, and together with the regular force, the Royal Marines currently have a fighting strength of about 6,500 people. So the Royal Marines Band Service. So there's around about 350 musicians and buglers that make up the Royal Marines Band Service, and we're based in six locations. So the band I'm currently in, Scotland Band, we're based in Recife at HMS Caledonia. Um, the Plymouth Band, who are based at the Royal Navy Initial Training Establishment, HMS Raleigh. The Limpston Band, who are based at the Commando Training Centre. Royal Marines in Devon. And Collingwood Band, who shares its name with the Phase 2 training base of the same name. Uh, and we've got Portsmouth Band or the Royal Band who are based in HMS Nelson. They're the five bands that we've got. The sixth location is the School of Music, which is based in the same establishment, HMS Nelson, which now caters for the Corps of Army Music trainees as well. So that's the Alford Schools of Music. Um, they're based together, but our training still comes under the Royal Marines School of Music. Uh, we also fulfil military roles. So members of Scotland Band, were recently deployed on the RFA Argus, which is a hospital ship as casualty handlers for four months in the Mediterranean. Um, and many members of the band service from Scotland and the South um, joined each other south of the border to vaccinate thousands of people during the COVID pandemic and to help out with general hospital um, services, um, basically going in and doing anything that we could to make the doctor and nurses jobs 
easier over the pandemic um, so that they could concentrate on making people better. Uh, so it can be a very, very varied career indeed. Uh, specialisations. So within the Royal Marines Band Service, we have two specialisations, musician and bugler. Both of these are trained at the Royal Marines School of Music in Portsmouth. As I said, it's a joint um, school of music now with the Corps of Army Music. So we share facilities. Um, you're still trained as a Royal Marines musician as opposed to an Army musician. Um, they share music professors and the building and the facilities, but our training is still separate. And moving on. So within, within the musician specialization, there we have woodwind, brass, percussion, strings, and piano. Those all make up the category of musician. And within Wonderwind, uh, we have flute, oboe, clarinet, for example, saxophone, bassoon. Uh, within brass, you've got instruments like cornet, horn, trombone, um, euphonium and tuba. Um, percussion, as you can probably imagine, it's much more than just a drum kit. Um, probably too much to list, as you can see in one of the pictures there. Um, it's tuned percussion as well. They play timpanis. They play all the little ancillary bits of percussion, like tambourines, triangles, individual bass drums, snare drums, all the things that make up that percussion section um, of a big concert band. And obviously when they're on parade playing uh, like a bass drum or tenor drums, like some of you may play. Uh, and obviously piano, but piano, clearly not an instrument that we take on parade. Anybody that plays uh, a piano would play a parade instrument as well. So either a clarinet or a cornet. Uh, so moving on. So whilst at the School of Music, you'll be, uh, as a musician, you'll be part of many different ensembles, which make you a very versatile and varied musician. Concert band is generally the concert performance ensemble. So that may be something that you've seen if you've been to see a Royal Marines band play in a, a music hall or uh, at the Royal Albert Hall, say, for example. Um, orchestra and jazz groups play for formal dinners, um, for example, for royal family members, uh, social dinners, mess functions all around the country um, and abroad. Parade Brand um, is our staple ensemble. It's probably what we're best known for. Uh, probably our most famous one, thanks to the white pith helmets and the meticulous straight lines as we're marching up and down. Um, and finally, we have small ensembles as well, which can cover any venue and any occasion. So, for example, they would be string quartets, brass quintets, wind ensembles, um, which can all play at... Um, they can be background music at dinners and social events. Um, and then we've got more stately things like our fanfare teams, um, which would play for sort of major state occasions. Uh, and then we move on to the chorus drums. So we've got musicians, everybody that plays an instrument, any of those instruments that we've just talked about um, comes under the musician specialization. If you want to be a drummer slash bugler, you will be part of the core drums. So the role of the core drums, as we talked briefly about in my little chat, um, our main role is to lead the parade band, all those ceremonial duties and the solo duties that we talked about, performing as a core of drums in those mess beatings that I said, or like the photograph at the bottom there, we sometimes do joint performances. Um, with drummers from uh, the Dutch Navy. We've had the top secret drum corps come over and play with us at the Royal Albert Hall. And we also did a collaboration with them for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee um, because apparently Her Majesty the Queen was a very, very big fan of the Royal Marines Corps of Drums and Top Secret. So um, we had to put that one together for her, which she seemed to really enjoy um, as we saw her on the television. Um, and mess beatings and drum statics. So those... Every time you see a core of drums, whether it's part of a beating retreat, which is a, a parade band display, or whether it's part of a concert, you'll normally see a drum static, which is where there'll be one or two, maybe lead drummers, which are playing the main um, rhythms, 
the lead tip, as you might call it, in the back. Um, and the rest of us in the front will be doing stick work, um, which is much more of a visual kind of um, performance. And that's what we're kind of world famous for, really, because we're we're the kind of only drum corps in the world that do that kind of stick work. Um, so it makes us kind of stand out. Um, so our ceremonial role, we perform at national events. Uh, so the photograph you can see here is one of our bands taking part in uh, the changing of the guard. So uh, if you've ever been to London um, and been around any of the palaces, you'll see that there's always guards there. Uh, and if you're lucky enough to be there at the point where they do a changing of the guard, there's usually a band involved and they'll march uh, the new guard in and the old guard out. And there'll be some uh, music and a bit of pomp and circumstance, which is fantastic, which is usually um, the army. However, every now and again, uh, the Navy takes on this duty and because we are the Royal Marines are part of the Naval Service we're the Royal Navy's band uh, we take part in these um, ceremonies too so if you can see in the background on that picture it's actually a Royal Navy guard um, that are doing the guard duties and one of our bands is there um, supporting them. We support armed forces charities as well um, significant historical events, like I spoke about the coronation of His Majesty the King um, with the passing of the late Queen. Uh, we had um, the funeral last year, along with Scotland Band, which I'm a part of, had to uh, perform in Edinburgh for the proclamation of the new King, which was only a couple of days after she'd passed away. Um, and we were also part of the all the Jubilee celebrations um, earlier that year for the 70th, uh, uh, platinum jubilee celebrations which was absolutely fantastic um you may have seen us on the television doing some of those um if you've watched any of those uh the queen's jubilee ceremony featured the core of drums opening um the party at the palace with the rock band queen um and you'll have probably seen us on the television for all of the others as well uh day to day so our kind of day-to-day -day job is supporting the Royal Navy um, with things like passing out ceremonies at Rally and Limpston. So when all the naval recruits and all the commando recruits finish their training, they get a parade, which is called a passing out parade, to say that they've qualified and they're now finished their training and they're going off to join their units. That's called a pass out parade. Um, and we perform for all of those. Uh, there's one every week for the Navy at HMS Rally. There's one every two weeks at Limpston for the Royal Marine Commandos. Um, we play for ship launches, including HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS, HMS uh, Prince of Wales, the two new aircraft carriers. We support armed forces charities with concerts throughout the year. So the concert that uh, I don't know if there's any of you from Eastern area that um, joined us in Scarborough the other weekend, but all these concerts that we do, or a lot of them, are to raise money for charities, mainly the Royal Marines charities, Royal Navy and Royal Marines charities, uh, the RMA and the RBL, to name a few. Um, we also play for historical events, so commemorating things such as uh, the Festival of Remembrance, D-Day anniversaries, Falkland ceremonies, um, but of course, we provide music to all of the country members, to large communities and small, from playing from town halls uh, in the deepest corners of the West Country. Um, my band last week were out in Northern Ireland doing a concert tour and schools tour over there. We play at the Royal Albert Hall um, up to the concert hall in Glasgow um, and over in Manchester. We play all over the country. Uh, so this photograph here is uh, the Royal Marines Band Scotland a few years ago on board HMS Queen Elizabeth. Um, so that's, as you can see, the, all the naval personnel are lined up around the ship. So that's usually when a ship is coming in, um, there'll be a ceremony on board and they all line the ship and we'll have the band on the, on the deck playing music. So we're in a, a slightly different uniform there, half whites, because it'll have been somewhere somewhere warm, no doubt. Um, 
this photograph is from 2012. So when the uh, Olympics were held in London, uh, the Royal Marines Band had a big part in sort of entertaining people um, that were attending. Uh, this was the opening, the opening parade, I think, the opening ceremony. So uh, whilst we often get to do parades through towns and particularly through London, it's not very often that we perform to crowds this size. So um, that's quite an experience. Uh, to be out there with so many people cheering and screaming in the crowds. Uh, high profile engagements, we talked about, um, we talked about some of those um, earlier. The, the picture on the right there is the one that I was talking about with the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, the concert party at the Palace. That was us opening the show with Adam Lambert in the middle there from the rock band Queen. Um, and the picture on the left is Ant and Dex Saturday Night Takeaway from a few years ago when they got dressed up in Royal Marine musicians' outfits and they learned to play their instruments um, as part of the end of the show show, which was also very entertaining. Uh, so our operational role, as I mentioned, some of the people from uh, the Royal Marines Band Scotland were recently on the RAF Argus. This is a, a photograph on board there where um, we support the ship uh, in a casualty handling um, position. So the guys there, they're obviously getting a casualty onto a stretcher. They're moving them from because they'll have arrived on the on the ship via a helicopter and they transport them from there down to the med bay where they can get seen to by the doctors and nurses. Um, so we support the UK commando force as part of chemical decontamination as well. So we learn how to decontaminate people, set up decontamination areas. Um, and we also support UK interests as well. So things like flood relief um, will go out and help communities um, when there's been severe floods or help with sandbagging to try and protect areas. Um, and as I mentioned before, we had various roles during um, the COVID pandemic where, for obvious reasons, we weren't outperforming any music. Um, so we spent all of our time in support of the NHS, really, um, in hospitals, helping them out. And some of our guys learned how to um, give vaccinations, give jabs, so that we could just take the pressure off, off the NHS in that respect. So, audition. So, if this takes your fancy as a career, What's the process for joining up? Um, firstly, if you let one of us know, so the email address that I gave you earlier on, the careers at royalmarinesbands.co.uk, um, our attract team there can send you information on look at live programmes where you can come and spend a week um, with some other like-minded candidates and learn a little bit about what life's like in the Royal Marines Band. So you'll do a little bit of playing, a little bit of um, marching, a bit of the, the physical training side of things. Um, basically just living, living and working with the Royal Marines Band for, um, for a few days to get a bit of a taster into it. Um, and then you would get, if it's something that you are interested in doing, you get booked on an audition with the Royal Marine School of Music, where you would play your instrument of your choice. Um, you may even try instruments that you haven't held before or haven't played on, um, but they like to test you on your, uh, your ability across the board, because it may be that you're a, a trumpet player, for example, but if there's no trumpet spaces that year um, and they have spaces for say uh, a trombone if you've had an audition on a trombone and they can see that you look like you could be quite adaptable to that and it's something that you could play it might be that they say we haven't got any places this year on that instrument however uh, we'd like to offer you a place as a trombone player and if it's something that you're interested in that can be something that you take on um so you would take part in a theory test as well. So the theory of music, um, if you've done any grades with your playing, 
and um, that will help towards that if you've done GCSE music all of that will help towards that theory test um, there'll be physical and swim tests um, a formal interview which they'll see they'll see you at the end of the week and the director of music training will be in there and they'll basically just talk through everything that you've done during that week um talking through your strengths and your weaknesses before sending you home uh and then you have to wait a considerable amount of time for your results um because at the end of that process you will be told whether you've passed the audition or not however they don't offer places until they've completed there's three auditions I think a year and once they've completed all of those auditions and they know who's passed all of the auditions they will then see what people they've got what instruments they play um, and what what they're going to offer what job basically they're going to offer to people so it may be that you've applied on one instrument but actually you've showed aptitude on another um, and they'd like to offer you a job playing that one or it might be on your original instrument. Uh, so if you're successful at the audition process and you're offered a job on whatever instrument and you decide to take it, you would then join us for phase one, which is initial military training. So this, uh, you journey to CTC RM, which is a commando training centre in Limpston, where you go through um, up to 16 weeks of basic training. And this is designed to test you uh, mentally and physically in every aspect with physical training, drill, weapons training, map reading, field craft, basically all the things that are gonna turn you from a civilian into uh, a service person. So kind of like the soldiering aspect of, of, our, of our job. Um, if you're successful at phase one military training, so that's purely at the commando training center at Limpston, you're, you're not doing the same training as the Royal Marines commandos, it's very similar. Um, they obviously go on to a commando phase after their initial military training, but Limpston is far better equipped and set up for this initial military training side um, of our training. So that's why we all do our training under the same umbrella down at the commando training centre, um, because we're all part of the same core. So if you're successful, if you're successful at the phase one training, you would then enter phase two training, which is music training at the Royal Marine School of Music in Portsmouth at HMS Nelson. So there you could be up for up to two years for musicians and up to 20 months as buglers. And you'll have three exams throughout that period of time, which sees your progression, which shows your progression, sorry, practically on your instruments. So as you're going along, you get assessed at certain levels and that that's why your training can be up to two years or up to 20 months for buglers um because it's set for basically teaching somebody from scratch so if you are already fairly competent on one of your instruments so say you join up and you're already grade eight on one of your instruments you'll probably progress through um training a little bit quicker because you've already got that base knowledge there uh, your theory will become harder too, so making sure you have a grounding for university studying if you wish to continue, um, which is completely free, so uh, there's a fully funded um, degree in music which you can take part in if you choose to as musicians, as buglers, uh, you can't do the fully funded degree in music at the moment, um, but there is a degree coming at the moment in place for buglers to take part in, which is in more of a kind of music management style, but that's something that's um that's sort of coming in the next in the next year or two. Uh you'll have parade band rehearsals twice a week there. Um you'll do orchestral, uh small ensemble, concert band rehearsals frequently, and you'll do lots of physical training, lots of sports, and plenty of adventure training as well, which is part of our job. We get given a year, a year, sorry, we get given a week each year where we can go and take part in adventure training. So whether you're into horse riding, skiing, um, football, you name it, you can probably go and do it for a week at a very reasonable price. Uh, 
So just to dismiss a few of the myths for joining the Royal Marines Band Service, you don't have to be an elite athlete, just a good all-round level of physical fitness. Um, our basic fitness test includes running, press-ups, sit-ups currently. Um, so just having a good a good level of fitness um, is something that we can build on. That's ideal. Uh, you don't have to be a highly trained musician. As I said, a lot of our training is made to take you from quite a low level all the way up to the, the musician that we need. So looking at probably around about a grade five, because you, you do need to be able to play the instrument. Um, but if you're offered a place on an instrument that you haven't played before, your training is going to start from, from the very beginning. So particularly with drummers and buglers, you're unlikely to have any qualifications in music because we learn these instruments within Sea Cadets um, and there's no kind of assessments on them. Um, so you'll be starting from scratch probably on one of them. If you've just played a drum in the Sea Cadets or you've just played a bugle, you could be starting from scratch. Uh, you don't have to be an Olympic swimmer. It is good to be at a level where you can, it's a basic swimming test, something along the lines of treading water for a short period of time, swimming a couple of lengths, jumping off one of the high boards to emulate um, jumping off a ship if you had to um, if you had to leave a ship in an emergency. Um, and also we are not Royal Marine Commandos. As I said before, we do our basic training at the Royal Marines, um, the Commando Training Center with them because it's better equipped for that style of training. Um, but they they do their initial military training and then they go on to their commando phase and they learn how to be a Royal Marines Commando and get their green beret. You would then come to the Royal Marines School of Music and your phase two training is music training where you learn how to be a Royal Marines musician or bugler. So who are we looking for? The Both roles, both specialisations, musicians and buglers are open to anyone aged between 13 and 20, uh, 16 and 32 years old, sorry. Um, we're looking for brass, woodwind, so all those instruments we talked about earlier, string, uh, so strings we didn't mention so much, did we? Violins, violas, cellos, uh, string bass, um, percussionists, uh, so not forgetting the percussionists need to be able to play um, drum kit, tune percussion. You're going to learn a lot of that in training, not necessarily have to um, not have to play all those when you start, but at least one or the other tune percussion or drum kit is a good start for that. Pianists, they're generally looking because it's such a complex instrument. Um, uh, you being grade seven for pianists before you even start because it's a more complex instrument and you will definitely be learning a second instrument in the cornet or clarinet so that you have a parade instrument. Um, we're looking for competent brass players, buglers, buglers particularly. So if you play the bugle and or military side drum, um, you can audition. You don't have to be able to play both. It's great if you can, um, but one or the other, if you are seriously thinking about becoming a Royal Marines bugler and you currently only play the military side drum, for example, it's worth trying to get hold of a bugle from your unit or a, a local place and um, having a little go at starting to learn the bugle because it will only help you moving forwards or getting yourself on one of these national band courses, area or national band courses, um, so that you can get kind of a foundation in in one of those. Um, if you've got a passion for music, a willingness to learn, you want to better yourself, you want to be physically fit and a team player, you've got to be a team player because we do a little bit of solo stuff, but the majority of music uh, is all as a group. It's all as ensembles. So we're working together all the time. As I said previously, there's only 350-ish people in the whole of the Royal Marines Band Service. So we're a small unit of the... Um, of the military um, and we're quite a close unit as well um, so yeah so that's what we're looking for uh, oh one second I went too far uh, so again if I'll leave this up for a little second if you want to take a picture that's all of our social media handles if you want to follow us there's constantly um, videos, uh, stories, reels going up on those. Following the bands, we do Instagram takeovers within the bands when we go and do engagement. So you get to see what life's like kind of behind the scenes and on the road, which is really helpful. 
Um, our YouTube channel is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you can always log on uh, and listen to Royal Marines Band music and watch our videos from the Royal Albert Hall. Um, if you are into um, the, the drum stuff, you get all of our videos on there with Top Secret. Um, and the email address, as I said before, at the bottom there, careers at Royal Marine Bands co.uk don't forget it's royal marines with an s and bands with an s co.uk that goes to our specialist attract team and they can literally answer any questions that you've got about a career in the royal marines band service if it's for you um if you've got any questions about instrumentation or qualifications or, or anything like that but you don't need you don't need a set amount of gcse's or, or a levels or anything to join us um just those things that we talked about before, just a passion for music. You want to be better and interest in the military um, and just being a general all round good egg. So I'll finish with this little video and then we'll go on to some questions if you've hopefully got a few. Okay, I'll put my face back on now. Hello, everybody. Oh, I think you're muted, Catherine. I am muted, always. <laughs> um, thank you for that. That was amazing. Um, so we do have a, a few questions, but if anyone has any more, um, pop them in the chat or the, the Q&A part or um, however you'd, you'd prefer to, to do them. So... We've got a question. What rank do you need to be to qualify for national band? Oh, I'll take that one then. Um, there, there isn't a specific rank. You need to be an enrolled cadet uh, over 12 uh, or 12 and above. Um, obviously, um, it depends on how many applications we get each year and what size of band and what selection of instruments we need and how we select. This year we had um, 141 applications for what is a maximum of 90 spaces. So it is quite tough. Um, in previous years, we've had some instruments where we actually needed more of them. So it's really hard to gauge exactly how we select that, but certain instruments uh, we get a lot of applications for and, and others um, not always so popular. Uh, generally, as a musician, it's a lot easier to get in because we're generally always after them. Although for the first year ever this year, we did have to, uh, deselect some um, trumpet players and a couple of others uh, and but we sort of offered some of them uh, the option to sort of go down onto bugle instead um, just so they could still be part of the event uh, and we were actually lacking pure buglers this year we've got quite a lot of domination players but but not a lot of pure buglers coming along at the moment everyone wants to play a drum yeah <laughs> fantastic that it does look really cool to be fair um <laughs> Does the Royal Marines Band deploy in battlefield? We we deploy in those roles that I spoke about earlier. So um, we kind of support the commando brigade uh, and the Royal Navy. So um, on that hospital ship, we're not we're not frontline troops. Um, we're we're the people that help um, the commando brigade with driving, like ambulance driving, medics. We'll get involved with communications. Um, and the decontamination, as I said, we, uh, we're kind of specialists in setting up decontamination areas, um, uh, along with the, the medics side of things. So we don't, we're not sort of frontline troops, um, but we are multitasking and, um, can be kind of sent out to, to help in any way, in any way that we can really, a bit like with co the COVID pandemic as well. Amazing. Thank you for that. Um, how hard is the training on a scale of one to ten? How hard is the training? Well, it depends. <laughs> it depends uh, physically and musically. Um, it depends on how prepared you are. Um, the more prepared you are, the easier it will be. Um, if you've put the training in beforehand to be physically fit, 
you know, working on your running, working on your press ups and that sort of thing, you'll find that, you know, if you don't do any of that, it's probably on the airing on the side of 10 um, for difficulty. But if you put the work in beforehand, you know, you can get it down to down to less than five, I would say. Um, and, you know, the same with your performance as well. If you've um, if you've d done the practice before you go for your audition and um, and worked on anything that because at the end of that audition process, um, even if you pass, they'll still give you things to work on. So they'll say, actually, your running could be a little bit better or your press ups and the technique leaves a little bit of work or, um, you know, we'd like to see that, you know, you've improved your your playing of your trombone in so and so way before you come and start and if you work on what they've recommended then um all of those things will make it will make it easier it's not it, it's designed to be you know to be on the difficult side um because you you know you're part of the military but um it's it's like most things in life you get out what you put in if you if you if you work for us um we'll work for you Fantastic. That's amazing. Um, so you've mentioned like um supporting the, the other services and decontamination and, and medical assistance and, and that kind of stuff. But are you apart from that, are you able to focus on just being in the Royal Marines band or do you have to have another role in the Royal Marines as well? Um, so that's that's our secondary role. Our primary role is is music. So we are Royal Marines, musicians and buglers, first and foremost. That's our day to day job. Um, that's what we get paid for um, in the main. Our secondary role is the kind of the more military role. Um, so that's something that we do every year. Um, we do a, a sort of week, which is a military training package to keep up on our skills. Um, so like uh handling a weapon and um navigation um getting the old map map compass out and finding your way around um all of those sort of military skills that we learn in that initial military training we just keep on top of them each year with a little uh, a little week long package um and then it's as and when we're required to do something um i personally haven't been um, I've only done training for those roles. I haven't been deployed in any of those roles yet, but some of the people that I'm working with currently in Scotland Band went and spent four months on the hospital ship RFA Argus um, while she was sailing around the Mediterranean. So just doing training exercises. So not actually um, not actually being deployed. They were just part of that training for four months in case something does happen. Um when they could get deployed on board that ship and go get sent somewhere to give some sort of relief to a, a pandemic or, or or a war situation, whatever's going on. So yeah, day to day, it's musician, musician and bugler. And that's our secondary role. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, I'm not sure who this question is directed at necessarily, but um, it's asking about help with music exams. Um, do secrets help in the the banter as help with in that regard or does... um not 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 direct help i mean some of some of the things that they do would probably uh, give them extra skill and experience at, which would then probably relate to exams particularly if you're a musician um there's no there's no direct help on anything but if there are people that are active within the the bands they can get advice and guidance from from the area staff and and the national team mm -hmm. awesome um and that looks to to be it for for questions just now unless anybody has i'll give a another few minutes in case anyone has any more questions Uh, I think there's one in on the chat. What happened to all the Marine Band over COVID-19? Yes. Uh, yeah, as I said, we um, pretty much everything stopped for us. Um, the last event we did in 2020 was the Mountbatten Festival of Music at the Royal Albert Hall, um, which was the beginning of March. Um, probably looking back, a super spreader event. Um but that was the last sort of big thing that we did, a little bit of local work. And then we went into lockdown with everybody else. And then within sort of a month or so of that initial lockdown was when we started going out and helping in the the local. We went all over the country. We sent sort of small, anything from four to 10 man teams 
um round to various hospitals just just to help out where we could and then people started getting trained in um in giving vaccinations to help in that respect um but a little bit of music continued after the first sort of couple of months um there was a couple of major celebrations over that first year um anniversary of ve day and a big anniversary of vj day which we we a small number of us traveled to london and and recorded a, a very socially distanced um drum performance on horse guards parade which went out on the bbc to commemorate those um and sort of from the july in 2020 we start as a buglers we we perform at um uh we perform at sort of uh remembrance ceremonies and that sort of thing so we were allowed to go and and perform at those again um as long as we were obviously socially distanced um which we started doing from then so yeah it kind of slowly but surely sort of the music crept back in um but yeah lots of helping out the nhs mainly perfect great um what made you join the royal marines band Basically, um, I so I joined the Sea Cadets at 10 years old as a junior, um, did that for almost 20 years because I was just about six months short of being 30 when I when I joined the band service. Um, so it was my full time hobby, Sea Cadets, particularly the band. Um, and now I get paid to do my hobby, which is absolutely amazing. Um, that first course that I went on to the Royal Marine School of Music in Deal in 93 that gave me the first taster I saw the the Royal Marine staff band out performing on the parade square there and was like well I quite like that um that was at the time when they'd just taken their first batch of females in the Royal Marines band service um and yeah my my passion for it just grew and grew with all the time that I spent in the sea cadets and doing national events and and all of that performing um and yeah decided to turn it turn my hobby into a career which is absolutely brilliant oh fantastic um so while you were in the sea cadets as an instructor what was your your job your role <laughs> uh i had many um so i was in a band way i was part of the national training team so i used to um I used to do all the core of drums training for national events and um, some of the national band courses that we ran at HMS Rally and all the local stuff within my, so I was part of the Harrogate unit for that whole time um, and had various roles within that unit just before I left. Um, I was the first lieutenant there. Um, I... I had various boating qualifications, not as many. I was more into the ceremonial. I was a drill instructor. I was the band master. Um, I was a piping instructor. I was a national piping champion as well. Um, a very long time ago. Um uh yeah, so was a kind of a a generic, a generic instructor like you have that does a little bit of everything, but I I definitely specialized in the ceremonial stuff, the stuff in uniform and um making noises. Um, my hearing's still pretty good to say I spent a lot of time with bosun's calls and bugles and drums in very small sea cadet buildings but yeah doing well yeah no definitely um did your unit have a band or was it the sort of national area stuff that piqued your interest uh yeah so my unit had a band the whole time that I was there so when I joined uh as a junior obviously too small to carry a drum or a bell lyre at that point but I was given a bugle when I was 10 years old and uh to see how many notes I could get out of it um and then progressed onto the bigger instruments as I got a, a bit taller um and yeah we we took part in some of the mass national mass band events and um the band competitions as well i did solo drumming and bugling um as a cadet as well took part in the area and national solo competitions um and it's i think there was a lot more bands back then when i when i was a cadet but i think the the opportunities now are just as great because we've got we've got more of a musician section so um, you kind of only really learn a bugle, a bell lyre or a, or a military side drum if you join a unit that's got a band already and they have those instruments. Whereas if you're in a unit that doesn't have a band, you might play the saxophone or the clarinet at school. Um, 
and you can still get involved with all of these national events now and courses um and as and as steve said you're you know you're vital to the to the mass band now because it's not just 120 people that hit bell layers and play bugles anymore we've got a you know a really nice music section and rhythm section so get involved if you can fantastic yeah definitely well the next question is um so their unit does not have a band how did they sign up for the instrument competitions and events um so most um areas will only have an area band competition there's there are very few districts that have a district competition for band so generally if you if you're into the solo competition which is only for drummers and buglers in the majority of areas although southwest did try out a musician one this year um and whether that continues we'll we'll look at that but if you're a drummer or bugler then you enter via uh, your unit uh putting you on to the competition uh whenever that sits normally somewhere between the may and sort of june july time um and and we only have a national competition every two years generally obviously we didn't have one this year it was pushed back a year and we haven't held one since 2019 because of covid but the plan is for the national band competition to be in august next year um if you don't have a unit band you can still do various events again everything is applied for via westminster or obviously now through uh the the new uh, uh portal system um uh, it's a case of everybody applies to an event and we will then select what, what we need but um, it's down to an area who they put through to a national competition um, basically on winners and uh, of various comp the, the both the whole band or the individual soloists um, so it's a case of just get involved contact you you know talk to unit staff get them to contact the relevant area band staff and 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 get talking to people about it get booked on courses uh attend uh, put your names down for various events that occur and that's that's the way to get involved um to the bigger and better side and just linking that to how um this will give you a good footing for the band service and and Kim's a great example about uh, about where you can springboard into the band service at, uh, at any stage in, in your career. I mean, we've got lots uh, of cadets who joined up before they actually turned eighteen. Some who wait until they've they finished college and go at eighteen, which is probably a slightly better sort of route. But you know, each to their own. Um, and we've got people that join a little bit later on. Um, but what we give you in the in the, the uh, sea cadets and is a great level of training and experience that you won't get anywhere else. So we can only give you that extra helping hand. And because we follow all the aspects of the Royal Marines in what we play and how we play it and the drill that we do, even if you're wearing a secret at uniform, um, then then we give you a great start. Uh, and lots of people who are cadets who are going to auditions are very successful in those. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Oh, fantastic thank you for that um so we have a, a very pertinent question how much would royal women's band get paid the salary like it it varies um so when you i don't know the exact figures now that's if you need to know exact figures that's something to uh, um it was all taken out of our careers presentation because it changes constantly um but you start off on a on a basic salary when you're in initial military training for the first uh, sort of six, three to six months, um, which is, it was something around 16, 17,000. It might be a bit more a year now. Um, and then it jumps up to about 20,000 um, once you start your music training. Um, and then there's increments, so it goes up levels each year while you're while you're in training. When you pass out of training and you become a qualified M3 or B3 musician or bugler, so that's you've passed all of your um, secondary music training and you're qualified to go out to a band, it jumps up to another level, um, which is around about 25,000-ish, maybe a bit more. Um, 
then after you've been in the band for a certain amount of time, you can do your next course, which is a two week music course at the Royal Marine School of Music um, for your B2 or M2 qualification, which qualifies you for promotion to corporal. Doesn't promote you to corporal because you have to be selected, but it qualifies you for it. Completing that course then makes you a Lance Corporal. So then you're in the pot for promotion to corporal, but that comes with um, another salary increase to around about 27, maybe a bit more. Um, so yeah, there's increments as you go up and as you get promoted. So every year there's a little increment, but if you get promoted, there's a big jump. Um, and considering that if, you, if you're looking at getting a degree and particularly a degree in music, you would be looking at finishing A-levels at 18, going to university and you've got to be able to pay to live at university. You have to pay to go to university. Um, this is probably more one for your parents than it is you, but pay to go to university, pay to live there, um, pay to eat, etc. cetera, um, which usually comes with a lot of debt. We offer a fully funded degree in music, um, which you're getting paid those amounts that we were just talking about. You're getting paid that salary every year and your training. It's done distance learning. So you can start it after you've been in training a certain amount of time. And it usually takes around, around six years to complete, but it's completely free and you have no debt at the end of it. And you've been paid a very good salary for what is probably doing your hobby for a living um, in the meantime. So if you are considering going to university and getting a degree, particularly in music, it's a no brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. And for the buglers as well, the degree that they're looking to implement for them uh, would work in a similar way. Um, it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be the degree in music the same as the musicians, but it'll something similar along the lines of music management. So um yeah, if you're looking at that level of education, um it's an absolute no-brainer for for what you pay and what you get paid. Yeah, that sounds absolutely amazing. Um, is there any further questions, or I think we've reached the the end there? Well, if if that's it, then thank you so much to to Kim for your presentation, for joining us this evening, and all your support for that. That is very much appreciated. And thank you to Stephen and Adam as well for, for joining us and offering that secret perspective as well. Mm.